हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू कोडिंग सिंपलीफाइड एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक इन जावा व्हिच इज जे यूनिट ओके सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट अस सी द हाई लेवल एजेंडा ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर कोर्स इन दिस कोर्स वी विल बी हैविंग मल्टीपल ट्यूटोरियल्स ऑन मल्टीपल थिंग्स कंटेंस इन जे यूनिट ओके सो वी आर कवरिंग दीस फॉलोइंग टॉपिक्स फर्स्ट वन इज इंट्रोडक्शन टू जे यूनिट इन व्हिच वी विल लर्न लाइक व्हाट इज जे यूनिट एंड हाउ uh we can uh perform a simple hello world program using the j unit okay then in second tutorial we will be seeing how j unit works so there is a at the rate test annotation uh through which everything is happening inside the j unit okay so we will discuss about it then in third tutorial we will be seeing different annotations in j unit so j unit provide a vast level of uh, annotations to used in the uh test cases so we will be seeing that then in the fourth tutorial we will be seeing the assertions in j unit so assertions is also a very important part of j unit in which we uh, just compare the expected and actual and like uh, get the result okay then in the fifth uh, series uh, we will be having this reporting in j unit so reporting is very important part uh, whenever we are developing some application okay then like how to report uh, what is failed and what is passed and how much uh, your product is consistent okay so we will be seeing in this uh, tutorial what are the different ways in j unit to report the things then there will be some miscellaneous topics uh, which are uh, the nested uh, test cases in j unit then lazy assert then repeated test cases like if you want to uh, run your test case multiple times then uh, how we can run through the j unit then there are some tags and conditional execution okay so this is the basic high level agenda we will be uh, uh, following uh, in future okay then uh, before proceeding forward let us uh, first see what is j unit and what is the architecture of j unit okay so uh, before everything let us first talk about some basic problems in the development okay so let's say you are developing a application okay and then you need to test that particular application you need to test the particular logic whatever you are developing okay so there are multiple ways one way like you can create the manual test cases and then when you have completed your logic then you can uh, apply those manual test cases on your logic and test whether all the things are working fine or not okay but hold on the problem is like next day if you develop a new logic or any other developer come into the project and he will be developing some new logic then how to make sure that everything which is like you have developed in past time is working properly or not so basically we want to make our uh, product consistent and the regression behavior should be intact okay so writing the manual test cases and running them again and again is uh, is a boring task okay and like it it is not consistent because uh if next day something has seen uh, some things uh, like previous things could be broke up okay so for that uh, we have this particular j unit which provides us the automated way to write our test cases okay so like as a developer we only concern about the coding part okay so j unit provides us the way to automate the test cases so that we can run them repeatedly and then get the result according to the things okay so let us see the definition of j unit J unit is a unit testing framework for Java okay so it is basically the unit testing framework in which you write the unit test cases and the next thing is J unit has been important in development of test driven development okay so test driven development is a very important strategy in which you first write the test cases okay and then you will proceed with the development okay so let for example you are developing one addition logic okay to add some uh, numbers now first of all what we will do is you will just create some test cases okay and then you will move for the logic and until your logic is get completed your test cases should be getting failed and whenever you have completed with your logic and all the test cases are passed so that you can say that your logic is robust now okay so this is the basic the meaning of test driven development in which we write the test cases first and then we will proceed with the development okay so let us see uh, the architecture of j unit now this is the diagram here which defines the j unit architecture so j unit 5 is a latest j unit version and uh, the previous version of j unit was j unit 4 
so as we all know that java is updating day by day and like there are a lot of things which are changing day by day in it as like lambda expression and other things also so junit for for we can say is a uh, like 10 12 years old so it does not support all the things which are coming new in java so uh, that's why they have created this uh, particular junit 5 in which they also provided the integration of the old junit 4 dash cases okay so there is this red thing which is showing as a platform so uh, whenever we uh, develop some test cases in the id so this id communicates with the junit platform okay now as like uh, in the java we are having the main method and jdk handles all the things so for running the test cases this platform handles all the things okay now there are some apis which are provided by this junit 5 which uh, communicates with the platform and provide us the result so first api uh, which is provided is called vintage so vintage means that it is uh, the api which uh, provide the support for the old test cases so let's say like your application is uh, older and you have written many test cases which are in junit 4 so with this particular support of vintage you can uh, go through the all the old test cases and like uh, they will not be impacted your old test cases will not be impacted after uh, you have uh, provided the vintage api in your project now the second thing is uh, this is the interesting thing just jupiter okay so junit 5 provide the support of this jupiter api which provide the new way to automate the test cases in java so first of all like uh, why it is named as jupiter so as we all know that in our solar system uh, jupiter is the fifth planet okay so j unit 5 is the fifth version of j unit so that's why they called it as jupiter api now this jupiter api supports for the new test cases and it provide a very automated way to uh, get the test case done okay and there are also some third party api like if you want to write some another kind of test cases and if your requirement of test cases is some different then you can also use the third party apis which will communicate with this particular platform and get your work done okay so this is the basic architecture of jun now let us see uh, how we can implement our automated test cases using junit in java okay so i am in intellij then uh, firstly we need to create a maven project so i am creating a simple maven project okay as you can see then next then it is asking for some group id let me give com dot stereo then artifact id i'll be passing j unit uh, basics uh, demo okay so this is our artifact id then this is our project name okay so let me click finish so it is asking me for this window okay so this is the project which intellij has given me this is the maven project okay so as it is a maven project now in here you can see that uh, we are having this pom.xml and by default we are uh, we are not having any dependencies or anything in this pom.xml simple project, project structure is there okay now this is our maven project and in here we are having this source folder and in the source we are having these two folders main and test so as we will be working on writing the test cases so we will be working uh, in this test folder only so before proceeding forward let me uh, add some dependencies in order to work with junit okay so in here i am having some dependencies let me copy paste all the things so if you can see then uh, let me import it uh like there are two dependencies i have put in this dependencies tag so first one is this and second one is this so first dependency is junit jupiter api and then second is junit jupiter engine so as in our architecture we have seen that uh, we are having this jupiter api and there is a platform the red part uh, of the architecture now the platform is defined uh, by this dependency the engine in which all the internal things of test cases are happening and they are running and this is the api jupiter api which provide us the clean way which provide us the functions to uh, implement our test cases okay so as of now like uh, we have added the dependencies and here one more thing i have done 
uh, like I have uh, created this simple property uh, for the version of uh, JUnit dependencies. So I'm passing it uh, here as a variable. Okay. Now uh, let me close this pom.xml and let us create some test case. So uh, let us create one Java class. Let us say JUnit uh, demo. So this is a simple class uh, we are having right now, JUnit demo. So whenever we are working with JUnit, then uh, like as uh, when when we work with Java, then we need to um, ma make a main function, and then in that main method we are doing all the things. But uh, whenever we are working with JUnit to write the test cases, then uh, we do not need to implement the main method. All the things are handled by the JUnit engine. Okay, so let us see how we can write a simple test case in JUnit. So first thing is like we need to. Uh, Add this test annotations on top of our test cases like what we are writing so there are a couple of things uh, like we need to import it from all JUnit Jupyter API so as we talk about Jupyter now this is the API which provides this annotation okay this is the test annotation and it is coming from this particular package now let us create a simple function uh, let us say public then it will not return anything uh, for now it's void then let me uh, name it as JUnit test okay so this is JUnit test then it will not take anything as argument now what our requirement is uh, like let's say we need to compare two strings and then we need to make sure that these two strings should be equal okay uh, so like whenever we are working with the test cases then one is the expected and one is actual okay so you provide the uh, expected thing and you get the actual thing and you compare both of them and then you uh, assert on the basis of that that your test case is passed or failed okay so let me create a simple string and name it as actual value and let us uh, create a simple string hello world Okay, so this is the simple hello world string. Now, what we need to do is this is the actual value. So let's say you have developed some logic, and uh, that logic uh, is giving this actual value. So for now, we are hard coding this hello world, but uh, this is coming from some logic. Let uh, imagine. Then uh, we need to compare this hello world with the expected result. So if you see, here is this assertions class. The, which which is coming from org junit jupyter api okay so let me use this assertion class and if i move to the function then there are a lot of static function in it like assert true assert equal assert false assert fail so these are the functions so for now what our requirement is we need to compare two things and make sure that these two strings are equal so as you can see there is this assert equal which take um like different types of uh, data as argument integer byte long string and everything so for now i am using this particular assert equal uh, then let me uh, let me put this hello world as i expected okay then our actual string is this actual value okay now this is our simple test case in which uh, we are uh, simply getting this actual value and comparing with the expected value hello world okay so let us run this test case and then see uh, how things are working in it okay so this is our particular test case and this is a format of IntelliJ uh, how it is uh, mentioning that the test is passed or failed so if you can see then there is this green tick it means that our test is passed so this is uh, the test result then this is the class name JUnit demo then in here we are having this simple test okay JUnit test and it is passed this time because our actual and expected strings are equal now let me do something like uh, from the actual string uh, let's say I remove the d of the word and let us again run this particular test case and see if it's working fine or not so yeah uh, as you can see that test failed one so it is showing that there is one test case which is failed so as uh, expected value so it is showing in here that expected value is hello world but actual is hello world so this is the assertion field and it is uh, showing us cleanly like for now we are not writing any methods to depict like test is 
passed or failed but the unit is simply doing this uh, it is showing the expected and actual so these are assertion paid so yeah that's all for this tutorial guys uh, if you are having any question related to this particular basic introduction of the unit then you can mention in our comment section and in the next tutorial we will be seeing uh, that how this particular uh, test is working and how JUnit is working internally. Okay. So, yeah, for now, that's it, guys. Thank you.